me I, I saw you when when you came over was it 2019 you came over to London it seems yeah, like a whole other world doesn't it um, I think it was 2018 or 2019 or both we first played London and 2019 was the last time at um she the studio place 92 94 right yeah no you've been over twice haven't you as it kind of seemed to me like you went from from being quite a new band that had just formed and there was a bit of buzz about you to to kind of be in this band that was doing this enormous international tour. Yeah, uh, I think it definitely was a bit of a head fuck, like, because we hadn't really toured that much and we hadn't done anything. And then, you know, thanks to King Gizzard and also, like, yeah, um, The Great Escape and stuff, like, we ended up going overseas and touring for a bit and getting a taste of it. And, yeah, I guess compared to other bands like we kind of it's kind of popped off relatively quickly which it can be confusing but I guess at the same time it's all we know as a band I suppose hey Dick yeah absolutely it's just how everything's been from gig to gig each time it's bigger bigger venue so it just seems pretty natural and slow to me really <laughs> you've, you've kind of developed as a band as you've been kind of gigging which I, I always think is like the the best way for for a band to to develop um agree with that. yeah 100 percent. because yeah we we like we pretty much just started the band so we could play in in our friends like house shows or house parties or whatever and then and then we just ended up playing heaps and heaps of gigs so like you know for example Declan like he had never really had a guitar lesson and that's why all the songs at the start are so simple but then he really he's really just come a long way like self-taught he used to like look up on YouTube like how to play guitar and stuff and then just naturally, I suppose, like playing, um, playing, uh, which I also really like the charm of not knowing how to do stuff. But um, I think, yeah, just like naturally when you play your craft a lot, you just get a little bit better at it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that, that's really inspiring to, to hear Declan. I, I hope that's, that was okay. To, oh, to man. I used to be really, really bad at guitar. I was actually thinking about it yesterday. One of the best moments of my time in the band off stage was when one day when I showed Amy what I could do one day, I, she got home from work and I was just like, look what I can do. I couldn't believe it. It was weird. Yeah. Tell her the story about when we played at Chopped. <laughs> Where? Well, vomited everywhere. No, no, when you, you, you didn't have your guitar plugged in or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I... I just, I just didn't know. I just had like a guitar pedal and I didn't know how to dial in an amp or anything. I didn't know anything about them and I just plugged it in and the guy was like, oh, like, what the hell? Like, what's wrong with this sound? I was like, I don't know. I just always have it like this. It was really broken. I think it had like something loose in there, but I didn't know how to dial the amp. And so I just played the whole set clean because he was scared of me damaging his amp. So it would have sounded so stupid. And I just had a flanger pedal that made lots of whooshing noises. And then, yeah, after that, Pinheads came up to me. They watched us and they were like, what was with your guitar? I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, really. And then Amy did, like, four shots of vodka or something. Add it in. <laughs> okay. So in, in terms of, of writing, how, how does that work? What's the kind of the band's dynamics? Do you kind of all get together and write together? Or, Amy, do you, do you bring stuff to, to the boys and say, play that? <laughs> it's pretty together like pretty chaos like we'll all just yeah get together and someone will be like oh I got a guitar riff and they'll be like sweet we'll just work on that for a while and then I'll just try and think of some lyrics for it and just kind of it's really organic and natural and just kind of um expression it's just pretty much expression but we also think about it a bit beforehand like I'll kind of be doodling lyrics all the time and stuff so what about you Dak um do, do you write just just do guitar parts or do you come up with words as well? Um, no, I don't know. Nah. Amy does all the words. I, um, no, nah, uh, that would be a bad idea. <laughs> um, yeah, just guitar parts. I get the, um, the impression that the Amy is the boss. <laughs> is, is that a... Where do you get that? Presentation? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Amy's the boss. And then I'm the secret boss underneath. <laughs> Amy, Amy, tells, Amy tells everyone what to do, and then I go, "Don't do that! Don't, don't do that! No, just do what I say." Yeah. You manage it. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's stupid. Gus, don't play that note there. Don't. That's stupid. Don't say Amy. <laughs> 
have, have you managed to to kind of still feel that you're kind of in in charge of what you're doing and in charge of your music and and stuff as as your career has has kind of moved up, up a step as well as you've kind of signed to labels and you've got agents and stuff involved I feel like with the music I definitely still feel like I can just express myself in any way and that it's very much so within my control. Um, but I think the hardest thing is just like, you know, when there's people in between you and, and the, uh, the world, it's like you can miss out on opportunities that you'd sometimes say yes to just because, you know, like people have different things in mind or whatever, um, if that makes sense. Like, you know, for example, just say this is a made up scenario, but just say there's like a radio in, Russia that has like eight listeners and they ask for a track it's like I personally would be like fuck and that's the sickest thing ever whereas like but if that was sent to an email they'd probably go to the spam and never get seen again um if that makes sense but it's sometimes feels like super out of our control because in a way it's like our band is so big and well from my perspective it's so big like I'm sure lots of people would think we're very much so still small but from where I'm sitting I feel like we're pretty big and um, to me, that feels like, well, this is pretty, I don't know, like, what's going on. <laughs> but I want to know what's going on. Had, had that been a plan then? Is, is this kind of this success, is that a, a surprise to you? Or had you kind of sat down at some point in the beginning and gone, right, we want to tour the world. We want to get signed to a label. We want to play all these big festivals. Or have you just kind of progressed as, as you've gone on? I think like uh not really the idea at the beginning wasn't to do that but once it sort of became sort of like apparent to us that we could do that like we could be on a label I mean like at the beginning I just wanted to be on a label because that's what all the cool bands were on you know what I mean like and um I'd been in a band before that had never been offered like a a label contract or whatever so I just really wanted to achieve that I don't think there was anything like there wasn't anything like about like money or becoming successful or anything. I just wanted like that little, it's almost like a blue tick of being a band having a label. And then like, um, yeah. And then like, as each week goes on in each meeting, you have like people just come forward to you with different propositions and stuff. And next thing you know, like you're not just having like the opportunity to play big shows in Melbourne, but like you can play London and Amsterdam and LA and stuff too. And that just, it just always sort of, naturally happens I guess I think yeah for me with all that stuff it's like we never really planned everything and we never really know what's going to happen next like kind of every point of my career I've been like well this I feel like very like you know in a the most humble way I can say I feel very like proud and successful of where we're at and I never thought would be where we're at and I still don't understand what it means to be at this point in our careers or whatever but um to me I just want to like I think the world's so big and so exciting and I never want to say no to opportunities just because they feel foreign to me and feel weird to me or I feel like, a, you know, like an imposter or I'm like, what the hell? I just want to take stuff on. And like, I think that's always been the attitude. Like most of the time things feel really uncomfortable and seem really weird and like taking money from music feels really weird and like um, all that stuff. But I'm like, come on, the world's so big and, you know, life's so short and like, why not just dip your toes in? <laughs> I think that's a great attitude. Really want people to hear our music and like, not because I think we're the best, but I think like, you know, if someone hears it, say like there's like a, yeah, like a 12 year old girl or non-binary person or bloke or whatever, who's like, oh, that's pretty cool. I could do that too. Then maybe that'd make a band that'd be way better than ours and just like continue the pass the torch in various ways and the weird reactions that will come from it. Were there any bands that, that stick in your memory that did that for you, that you kind of stood in front of and thought, fuck here, I, I want to do that too? Uh, not particularly. I guess just like, I just really love live music and I've got so much energy and I was like, oh my God, I just want to fucking give it a crack. <laughs> my piece is here, sorry. <laughs> your piece is what? here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you crack on with yeah. it. <laughs> I've got yeah. for dinner. Oh, okay. I've got leftovers. <laughs> I've I'm oh. about to have my breakfast. <laughs> you haven't? What time is it there? Uh, it's eleven a.m. here. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so. I've got, like I made this like really shit curry. You know when you're like starving, so you just try and cook something and it's just rushed and bad. 
I've got like I tried to make like Indonesian satay tofu and it's really really bad that sounds very fancy <laughs> it sounds fancy but it's just pretty much coconut milk and peanut butter <laughs> Yeah, I, I very nearly booked you I I was talking to I can't remember maybe it was your manager it might have been like 2018 um and and that they were like you know there's this new band that you sounded amazing it was your first time over in the UK um and uh he was like yeah your festival sounds like something that you'd like to play and he was like but we're just talking to this label and and these agents and then I think you you just kind of got picked up and then all of a sudden you were you were too big to play my little festival <laughs> yeah so that's the thing I guess I was talking about earlier where it's like that kind of festival would probably be something really fun that we would like to say yes to but then it's like there's stuff that gets lost and there's things that like there's just like you know stuff that gets left behind because it is smaller or maybe there's not a much financial support or whatever it is and it's like it's tough because as an Australian band like everything is very much so expensive like to tour America you got to get visas and rah 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 extra flights where like blah but it's like in the end it's like my favorite some some of my favorite I really love the big festivals I love the big shows I love all that stuff heaps but I also really love that kind of stuff because that's all this like before I played in a band the biggest venue I'd ever been to was 100 capacity 200 capacity so I mean that's all I know so that's it's, it's, it's tough to try and find a compromise. Um, even though I really value everyone who works with us and for us and together because they're just people who love music as well. Um, sometimes I miss, I, don't, I just hope that stuff that I like it doesn't get l- left out. Yeah. Do you still prefer playing the, the little shows where you can kind of smell everyone in the room? <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't necessarily prefer them, but I love them and I love, I love that and I love the big shows too because I, I want to just like experience heaps of different stuff and like you know I don't want to stay in the same place and just because I love the small shows and I love all of that I don't want to just get stuck in, in like in a loop forever of just something I enjoyed once and I want to try at least I want to like try everything I possibly can and if in the end I get spat out and think well I actually preferred the smaller shows at least I have some evidence to back it up because I can say like I gave it a red hot crack, but I also, like I said, enjoy the big shows, but for their own reason. What are you laughing at, Declan? Oh, at least I gave it a crack. <laughs> Let's see your pizza. Dude, I had to chase the dude down the street. I don't. I had to mute. Yeah, he dropped it off at the wrong. Um, he dropped it off at the wrong house, and I was like, I went out onto the street. Hold on, is that? And I fly away. Hang on. Oh, you caught? Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks a good pizza. Yeah. It looks really good. Where's it from, La Taverna? Uh, no, nah, Stretch. Oh, nice. I got it delivered from Stretch. It's like it's like 200 metres from my house, but I still got it delivered. <laughs> it's cold. Off at the wrong place. I don't know if you guys were what, paying attention or anything, but like I muted my mic and I went out to his car. And I was like, did you just drop off a pizza? And he was like, to 18? I was like, no, eight. And he was like, oh, I think I dropped it off at the wrong place. And he went down and he ran back with the pizzas. So your, your neighbor thought it was Christmas, just like yeah, free pizza. <laughs> um, I should ask you about your album, shouldn't I? So I, I told you I'm really unprofessional. Um, <laughs> so you, you've got this album. Presumably, you you wrote it, recorded it in in lockdown, did you? We started writing it at the end of 2019, and then we recorded it. Yeah, in in between lockdowns, in lockdown kind of thing. So when whenever the lockdown would open up we'll just hit the practice space for ages um but then when lockdown would happen again we'd just sit on our asses and then yeah we recorded it in like august or october or something 2020 <laughs> nice yeah i mean it's, it's been kind of you know one positive that that's come out of the pandemic as people have had time to to kind of produce music and yeah um, yeah well, I guess for us, it was always going to be the plan to try and write an album 2020. And if I'm honest, I feel like we spent a lot of time in 2020 not writing an album, but just doing sitting around or having a having a whinge or or doing whatever people do. But <laughs> just being kids. Just being what? <laughs> kids. 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 <laughs> Your, your album is Comfort For Me. It's out 10th of September. 
I've got the track listing here. I haven't heard it yet. Um, I've heard Guided by Angels, which I, I absolutely love. I love that video so much as well. Was oh, that loads you. of fun to, to make? Yeah, it was heaps of fun, eh? It was really fun. It was freezing cold on the beach day and it was, it was fucking awesome because I just got ice cold and finally felt alive for a second. And um, yeah, that, that was my car on the highway and we just literally stuck our heads out the window and just went for it and good old Bryce was driving, really hung over. So. I, I don't know how the, the guys just seem so kind of poker face um, while you're just like going mental shadow boxing just all over the place and they're just like... Huge yeah. jokes cracked. I don't know, like John who made the video from PHC, he just was like, I just want you guys to talk to each other in the background. So... I mean, you know, it was long days almost, like, you know, um, so sort of took the whole day and eventually we sort of ran out of things to talk to each other about. And so, yeah, I guess maybe the boredom wasn't acting. <laughs> it just was like <laughs> expressions because we just, you know, I don't know. Yeah, just boredom. <laughs> yeah. We're used to aiming and chaotic around us anyway, so. I'm just going to get my computer charger. I'm just going to pause my video for a second. Okay. One second. <laughs> And you can ask me some questions. Yeah. What, what's um, what's what's the best track on the album then, as far as you're concerned, Zach? Um, I reckon "Don't Need a Cunt Like You to Love Me." That's that's the best title. I love titles with brackets in any way. That that's a, yeah, they're good, aren't they? I like bracket titles too. Yeah. More I brackets. like that title too. Eh? <laughs> Amy likes it too. It's just very straightforward rock and roll. It's just like. 12 bars, rock and roll fast, and then um, a solo in the middle. And then, yeah, just, I don't know, that's it. All matter of fact and gets the message across. I think it's the most most backing vocals on the album too, which was fun. Yeah, because I was like, oh, I can't think of any lyrics for it. And I was like, oh, the boys should sing it. And so the lyrics are, um, don't need a cunt like you to love me. Don't need a cunt like you to love me. She's 10 out of 10. You say so. You think you can fuck with her? Hell no. <laughs> okay, this is my new favourite song already. <laughs> is that going to be the next single, do you think? It's not, but um, I want to make a video for it. I think it'll be fucking fun. Also, it's really short and I love songs under like two minutes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No messing about. <laughs> Um, you, you talked about a bit about you, your kind of influences, kind of rock and roll, you know, rap as well, and kind of the hardcore scene and stuff. I I would like to know what bands you really hate, though. What's um what what's like? What would be the the most insulting bands to be um, compared to if someone said, "Oh yeah, they sound like Queen or Maybe uh, Amel and the Sniffers from the first album." <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, feel you like start, how long have you got <laughs> yeah, let's go for it let's fucking go for it who do I fucking hate um, the chat. It, it shits me when people say that we sound like Blondie because I don't think we sound like Blondie I respect Blondie I respect Deborah Harry I think she's a staunch person and an awesome front person but I'm like we don't sound nothing like them to me and I don't want to be compared to someone just because we both have blonde hair but it's flattering, but I'm like, we don't sound like them. We're very Australian and we're very sloppy. And I don't know. That shits me on a personal level. What else? Um, um, who else? There's probably heaps. What, Declan? Tropical Fuckstorm. No, I like them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like, what else? Idols. <laughs> Uh, I don't like I'm it when. Crazy, by the way, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't like it when people say we sound like, yeah, because we're so we're influenced by Australian musicians. If people are kind of like, this sounds exactly like, and then they start listing off some like classic UK punk or like, oh, you must be influenced by like Joy Division, and it's like, are we like oh, them? Yeah. Iggy and but the Stooges just... compare us to oh, Iggy and the Stooges, Stooges. everyone. Because we love, we were like, again, it's like love, Iggy Pop, respect, Iggy and the Stooges, fucking hero, fucking icon, fucking like pioneer. But honestly, 
I've only listened to his album once or twice. And of course we sound the same because it's just like a bunch of people who can't play music or we all pick up music and then it sounds the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lazy right? journalist. <laughs> we really Very set nice. me up now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Get some hate going. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. let's get, let us get some loves going then. You said you're kind of influenced by Australia, band, so so kind of give a shout out. Who, who's who's like in the in the Melbourne scene? What what new bands should we be listening to over here? Um, in Australia in general, I feel like there's a pretty dope scene. It's hard to say right now because I haven't been to a gig in like a year because COVID and everything. Um, but pre COVID, yeah, um, I guess like. From Sydney, there's a band called Coffin, C.O.F.F.I.N. Then, um, yeah, there's fucking, who else? Camp Cobra, awesome. Um, uh, who else? Um, yeah, Will, is there a new band there? Pretty good. Not very, Diddy. not very rock and roll, but yeah. Blonde Revolver. Um, there's a band called Nasho, who don't play anymore, but they're really good. A band called Swab, who we just played with the other day, S W A B, um, and um, yeah. Oh no, that's great! I'm gonna check out all of those. Sweet. There's a band called Yeah Rabbit Dogs, um, as well. They're pretty good. Uh, a band called Parsnips. I like them. They got a song called Give. It's called Help, but the chorus is just Give me hell, so I love myself. Good chorus. They're called yeah. Parsnips. Uh, nice. Clam are really good. And uh, I had another one, but I forgot. That's that's a good playlist already. I might even make that into a playlist. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, chuck, in some, chuck in some old bands as well, like Cosmic Psychos, The Radiators, uh, Coloured Drunk Ball, Mom. Drunk Mums, June. <laughs> uh, sorry. Dumb punts, um, smooch, um, the saints, radio birdman, skyhook, right. cold chisel, sunny boys, radiators, <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, this this is turning into a really long playlist now. This is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's my afternoon sorted. Thank you. It, it does seem like there's there's a lot of bands coming out of Melbourne, particularly. Is is that because you have you got really good venues there, or are there kind of you know youth groups encouraging people to pick up guitars, or, or just just kind of lots? I don't of know. Why, to be honest, I think it's just a coincidence because everyone here is fucked up. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's a, yeah. I guess like a spirit influence, like everyone around you is kind of like doing stuff and. So everyone else is doing stuff as well. Very light. There's lots of different arts, not just music, that are popping off in a, in Melbourne, I guess. Yeah. So it's just like a real, um, I guess, like a uh, new, real nutrient soil out here in the streets of Melbourne for artistic people. Nice. You're launching your your album. Have you started writing writing the next one? Or... Nah. No. no. <laughs> One thing at a time. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're done with that now, I think. This is the last one, I reckon. What? This is not true. <laughs> not me. Been there, done that. What the fuck, bro? Hopefully we can just tour with this one for the rest of our lives. I'm gonna do a live stream in um October. Oh nice. That everyone in the world can watch and it's gonna be really crazy with like some cars and, and stuff. Wow, I look forward to that. Then. And that's going to be um, playing the new album, is that? The whole album, yeah, from top to tail. Okay. With hits like Don't Need a Cut Like You to Love Me and Guided by Angels. <laughs> Excellent. And that's in October. Cool. I shall look out for that. Next but... single out, Amy. Next single's out. I don't know. With the album. With the album. Yeah, yeah next out with the album. Cool. And what, which, which is the new single? Hurts. Hurts. And this is about car hire, I'm presuming. Pretty much. Yeah. 
hoping for that endorsement. <laughs> Free cars for life. Yeah. On a WRX, Subaru WRX. They're awesome. Okay. Well, just put it out there and then, you know, you can manifest it. <laughs> yeah. What's your festival called? Uh, it's called Loud Women Festival. Sweet. So, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Well, if it's COVID this year, well, maybe we'll be able to play it one day. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> anyway thank you so much for uh, for giving up your your evening and enjoy the rest of your pizza and your curry thank you i lovely. wish i had pizza so much me too <laughs> <laughs> lovely to Here's meet you have a good day bye Dad. bye, bye. Cassie. bye amy bye, bye,